All right, here we are on part two, picking up here on this Bender build. And uh, if you didn't see part one, check the uh, end screen of the video at the very end. I'll have a link to a playlist that has all the videos in the series. And there should only be three or four total. Um, so in this part two here, we what we're going to be doing is making the carriage uh, that's going to serve as the second part of the of the bend position uh, on, on both wings, if you will. And I'm just looking for some pieces I can use. I need something pretty thick uh, for this, and uh, you'll see why later. So I was able to locate some uh, pieces here that I'd used on a previous project uh, where we made this lifting lug for a crane. And uh, just doing some layout work and uh, going to go ahead and get it in the chop saw and get it cut here. And the reason I'm using the chop saw instead of, you know, one of the band saws or other methods is um, the, the horizontal band saw is great and would be perfect for this, except for the vice configuration on it doesn't allow you to get very close up to the band saw blade itself. And this chop saw allows you to get in there really close, uh, you know, and you can see these pieces are kind of small and I need to try to square them up to the extent that I can and then we'll get them in the mill and mill them up and, and get them squared up even more. So we'll just get them in here and get them cut. So now we're over on the horizontal mill, and uh, these pieces that we're using are some cold rolled one and an eighth, no, one and a, yeah, one and an eighth inch thick, so one inch, 125 thousandths. And um, you'll see why we needed them that thick here in a little bit, but these are the pieces that we, we squared up on the saw. And now I'm just using a piece of aluminum TIG wire uh, in the vise jaw to kind of take up the difference of the unsquare edge uh, because it is just a saw cut and is not perfectly squared up. So we're gonna we do have one factory edge that's against the uh, the the front jaw. Probably should have been the other way, um, but nevertheless we've we've got it squared against the uh, the factory edge and um, and the one piece of uh, TIG wire. You might notice the camera moving here a little bit. I've got the camera really close and it's zoomed in. And the mount I'm using on the camera, um, it just um, is very sensitive to any vibration. So I apologize for that. Uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, it's not too annoying. But so we're just going to take some cuts here and mill off this edge. And, um, and I'll get you fast forwarded through this. All right, so next up here, I am in the process of uh, taking the pieces that we squared up in the mill. And by the way, I didn't get them perfectly square. There isn't anything, you know, really about the edges that we're referencing off of, you know. Um, so the uh, the idea there was just to get it as square as we could. Now I'm just doing a, um, a center punch through the slot to uh, be able to locate a couple of holes here. And... Um, you know, so we'll just uh, get those laid out you know, and they'll, they'll take a center a uh, or a transfer punch the, uh, and just whack middle. it really hard with the center. And it's not really meant to be uh, something to make a deep impression with. It's only 
really meant to leave you a little witness mark. And then you can take a regular automatic center punch or a regular one with a hammer and hit it hard. Uh, because the transfer punches are, um, at least the ones I have, aren't really that uh, hardened and um, the tips on them get dulled and there's not a really a great way to, to sharpen the tip. Uh, so um, anyway, so um, we got the first hole laid out and then I'm just using some calipers to kind of get a symmetrical layout of holes. Again, this is, the, the real critical measurement is from the edge to the uh, from the back edge to the center of the hole, the hole spacing itself isn't really that important, but I was just trying to make it symmetrical on both of them. So we'll lay those out and get those punched as well. All right, so here I'm just swapping out that half inch end mill for a drill chuck and um, just thought I'd show you this, uh, just hitting it with a hammer there to unseat the uh, you know, from the taper and then putting in the Jacobs 18 in chuck and then getting the table positioned um, to do the drill and tap. Uh, we're using half 13 bolts. One side of it's going to be a clearance hole. The other side's going to be tapped. So we're going to drill the tap size all the way through and then come back and drill the clearance hole about halfway through. And then you'll see in a little bit, we're going to mill a slot through the middle of it. We're just getting everything all set up here and, and then we'll get going and get to drilling here. Mill setup, we're gonna um, locate the hole using a little center pin and then uh, we got a spot drill in there that we're just gonna um, you know get the hole started with and we're gonna put our our tap drill size for the half 13 in and uh, we'll get that plunged all the way through. And what I should have done on the first hole was swapped out the tap drill for the clearance drill and drilled that, but I, you'll see here, I forgot to do that and moved over and drilled the second hole. And, um, and then I swapped the drill out and, um, you know, do the clearance hole and then move it back to the first position with the original drill, get it lined up and then swap drills again. And so, yeah. Anyway, and then uh, after we get this block done, we're going to go ahead and get the other one put in and, um, and do the same thing with it. All right, so after we get the uh, holes drilled in, I'm going to come back now and use the half inch, half 13 tap. And I'm going to chuck it up in the drill and, uh, or in the drill chuck and go ahead and uh, start to power tap it and power tap a little ways in through it to it just to make sure it gets started straight and you'll see it's kind of slipping in the chuck and then um, then I'll go ahead and just finish it up by hand so I'll get you fast forwarded through the rest of this part All right, so in this next part, we've got the block turned up on its end, and now we're gonna mill a half inch slot through the center of it 
so that it will slip up onto our carriage plate and uh, you'll see kind of how the fitment works here shortly but um, I've got to mill a very deep slot all the way down through the center of those holes to the bottom of the holes and I'm taking about an eighth inch at a time and um, this mill could easily be pushed a lot harder than that but I was just worried about the end mill and the end mill is carbide so you know how those uh, can snap really easily uh, especially when you've got it extended out you know and it's kind of a longer end mill if you will so this is a roughing mill and um, you know just again taking eight inch passes not really pushing it that hard um, just taking our time to get through there without breaking any tools so uh, we'll, we'll let you uh, see the rest of it and fast forward you through uh, to the next next part and uh, we'll do a little fit up here next All right, so here you can see our carriage plate and uh, you can see our two blocks that we now have uh, cut down to size, milled square, and uh, the holes drilled and tapped and the slot milled out of the center of it. I actually took quite a bit of time to, to do that, but um, you get a look at, you know, kind of the, the fit up and, you know, how this is going to work. So you're kind of getting a look at how things are fitting up with the DOM tubing that we turned on the lathe in part one and the dies that Tom Zellickman made for us and kind of how that's, that first die is fitting in the fixed position. And then the carriage is going to hold another die into the corner of one of the edges of it. Um, you know, and just turning, turning the whole thing into chips, I'm just kind of nipping off the corner here on the, uh, on the vertical do-all bandsaw. And uh, this thing is a beast and comes in pretty handy, but it, uh, if you're not careful, it will definitely, um, you know, bite you. All right, so after we nipped off that corner on the bandsaw, you can see that edge nipped off there. We've got it back over in the mill and we've got a one and a half inch shell mill that we're going to push into it to create the radius that our um, pivot mount will fit into. So we're just going to go ahead and fire up the mill here and uh, get this uh, pushed in there and then uh, we'll show you the next step. Okay, well that wraps up part two. You can see our uh, part that we got all milled out and then that last step there, milling this radius so that we could get that fitted in and welded up. All right, and uh, so we're getting pretty well done. You can see this carriage that we made, you know, gives us the adjustability. And then uh, all we have to do left is to make the actual pivot arm itself. And that'll be in the, uh, in the next video that will be uploaded in the next couple of days.
All right, if you like this video, go ahead and check the center of the screen. There's a button there you can press, and that will take you to a playlist to see the other videos in this series. Thanks for watching, everyone.